Hello students, in the last class we have already seen the introduction of uh, iris diagnosis and today we will be continuing with certain uh, structures in the iris and its implication in diseases. So as you all know that eye is one of the most fascinating organs of our body and it helps us to connect with our world and there are in our day to day life we use many phrases and words which are related to the eye. We usually say the beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder and we also use a phrase like in the blink of an eye which uh, means that within a short span of time because this phrase is developed from the fact that the eye has the fastest uh, muscle contraction in our body. It happens within the uh, speck of a time that is why we say in the blink of an eye. We also say that eyes are the mirrors of the soul. So now um, based on this I would like to proceed into the iris diagnosis because the first and the foremost part of the eye is the eyeball and in the eyeball iris is one of the important structure. So iridologist otherwise called as iridologist they not only see the eyes as windows of our soul but also see the windows into the body of our uh, in, uh, windows into the body state of health. Iris diagnosis is an integral part of natural diagnostic methods. Iris diagnosis is a quick, non-invasive, painless system of health analysis and by looking at the color, pattern and lesions of the iris, we can see what is going on inside the body of a person. So you can see the in the slides, this is a basic eye structure which we when we look at from the, from the outside we can see the iris which is the colored portion of the eye and we also have the white portion of the eye which is called the sclera and it is within the iris we have the pupil which contracts and relaxes based on the light which falls on uh, the iris. So the main function of the iris is to regulate the amount of light which is falling on the retina and thereby a vision is made possible. Now how do we analyze the health of an organ through iris? We do this with the help of an iris chart. Iris chart is developed by uh, Bernard Jensen. Many people have developed different types of iris charts but the one which is used today is the one which is developed by Dr. Bernard Jensen. And the chart has different areas of representation just like you have the reflexology chart for palms and legs, feet. Uh, you, we also have uh, uh, representations of our organ in our iris. And this is what the iris chart depicts. So every portion of the chart has a particular organ relation. Every chart, every portion of the chart is related to the, our internal organ. For example, 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock position in the right iris, we have the liver area. And 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock position, we have kidney area. So similarly, 11 to 1 o'clock position, we have the brain area. So similarly, almost all our organs are represented in the iris. Right-sided organs are represented in the right side iris, left-sided organs are represented in the left side iris. Now you can look at the slides that this is one of the uh, one right iris chart which is used by iridologists to check the uh, organs in the right side of a body and you can see the major organs are demarcated like liver, testes, ovary, kidney, vagina, thyroid. So these are the major organ representations in the iris. This is only the right iris chart. Similarly, we also have the left iris chart. Now iris chart is the one which is used by an iridologist to diagnose the disease. So in iris diagnosis, we will learn different areas of the iris and different iris landmarks and its variations in health and disease. And today in our class, we are going to study one of the major iris landmark which is called the autonomic nerve breath which can be observed with the naked eye which is, which is also known as iris frill because it resembles the frill of a cloth it is also called as cholerate. So this is the picture of an uh, autonomic nerve breath and as the arrows are pointed towards the circle you can see this is the autonomic nerve breath that is also called as iris frill, frill, frill. it is also an important landmark mark that an iridologist will analyze. Now the position of the autonomic nerve breath as you have seen in the picture is one third away from the pupillary margin that is the outer border of the pupil and it is two third from the scleral margin. Scleral margin is the area where the iris makes with the sclera, the white part of the eye. 
and different sounds are represented in the iris. Now, as uh, we have studied, we have already studied different major sounds and uh, minor sounds. The first and the second minor sound, that is the stomach area and the intestinal area, falls within the autonomic nerve breath. And an autonomic nerve breath represents the autonomic nervous system in our body. You, you all must have studied uh, what is autonomic nervous system in uh, your first year in, patho in physiology. So, autonomic nervous system is, a, is consisting of sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous groups which uh, controls the autoregulation of m most of our involuntary organs, involuntary functions in our body. So, the autonomic nerve breath in the iris is a representation of our autonomic nervous system. It is the main nerve structure located in the iris which is, uh, which is also an embryonic membranous remnant which is present in our body. Now, this is the graphical representation. You can look at the slide. This is the graphical representation of the autonomic nerve breath. The, uh, the dark area, the circle which you see uh, outside the pupil is called the autonomic nerve breath. And the relation of the autonomic nerve breath, nerve breath with other organs we will study now. Autonomic nerve breath is literally related to every organ in our body. In two ways they are related. The first one is by the autonomic nervous regulation of each involuntary organ is regulated by the autonomic nerve breath. Now as a representative of for the exchange of nutrients and toxic, toxic materials between the intestinal tract and the humors of the body. As you have seen, the autonomic nerve breath is uh, bordering the first and second zone which is nothing but the stomach and intestinal zone. So, anything which happens in the intestinal area also affects the, the size and the shape of the autonomic nerve breath. It acts as a bridge between the intestine and rest of the organ because whatever uh, food you digest and assimilate will be absorbed by the intestinal wall and that will be carried to the different organs. Now, the, qual the quality of the blood which you transfer to the organ depends, that decides your health. So, the intestinal health is important because that is the major area where the disease starts. So, since autonomic nerve breath is lying in close contact with the intestinal area, whatever diseases that affects the internal intestinal tract will also affect the autonomic nerve breath. Now, this is the, you can look at the slide, this is the relation of the intestinal wall with the autonomic nerve breath. In the right side picture, you can see the ascending colon, transverse colon and the descending colon. You can also see the hepatic flexure and the splenic flexures and how the organs are represented in relation with the intestinal borders. You can also see because uh, it is well, it is very clearly mentioned there. Uh, near the hepatic flexure, you can see the portions of medulla, mastoid, ear, neck and shoulders. The same way in the splenic flexure, you can also see mastoid, ear, neck and shoulders. So, a, a, all the areas in the iris chart is lying in close relation with the intestine. Now, on the left, uh, the other side of the picture, you can also see how intestines are represented in the iris. The right side iris will have, just as we have uh, ascending colon in the right side of a body, the same way right side iris has the ascending colon and half of the transverse colon and the left side iris will represent transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon and rectum. So, this is how intestine is represented in the uh, iris and this is lying in close contact with the autonomic nerve breath. Exchange of nutrients and toxic materials between the intestinal tract and the humors of the body decides the health of each organ. Now, there is also a reflex connection. Uh, every organ is reflex related to the autonomic nerve breath. Any changes in the autonomic nerve breath can also uh, affect the size and shape of the autonomic nerve breath. So, we will see what will happen during prolapse of colon. Prolapse condition means sagging down of colon giving rise to pressure symptoms. If any, uh, uh, pr uh, the, if the transverse colon is sagging down, it can exert pressure on different structures in the abdomen. So, this is how you see this prolapse of colon in the iris. See, you can observe that the transverse colon which is usually lying straight is sagged down and how it is represented in the, in the iris. You can see the top part of the autonomic nerve breath is dipping down towards the pupillary border and this sign in the iris says that there is something wrong with the transverse colon or there is a prolapse of transverse colon. 
Now this is the picture, the original picture, we can compare it with the normal iris and the prolapse iris, prolapse colon in the other side. See the first part of the picture says the normal shape of the autonomic nerve root and in the second picture you can see how the top part of the autonomic nerve root has come down towards the people. So this dipping of the autonomic nerve root at the superior region shows that there is a prolapse of the colon. Now how do you represent, how do you see spastic colon in an iris? So the usual position of the autonomic nerve root is one third away from the papillary border but here you can see that it is very close, it is coming very close to the papillary border which means there is a spasticity in the colon which can uh, lead to spastic constipation. Now this is also called as ballooning of uh, autonomic nerve root. See you can see the first picture is a normal one, the second picture you can compare the uh, 11 o'clock position you can see how the autonomic nerve root has taken a ballooning shape, it has gone out of the uh, uh, usual uh, structure. So this shows that there is a uh, loss, of, la, loss of tonicity or lack of tone in the uh, bowel uh, movements. So this results in atonic constipation or atonic bowels. This is how you see how intestinal functions are related to the autonomic nerve root. You can also see overactive and underactive stomach conditions from the iris. See the iris, the area within the autonomic nerve root, the color changes of that predicts how your stomach acids function. The darker color inside the autonomic nerve root says that, says that your stomach is underactive and if it is a lighter color it says that your uh, stomach is overactive and you know what are the conditions where overactive and underactive stomachs are resulting. Uh, next one is diverticulitis, diverticulitis you know as it forms uh, small pockets on the wall of the intestine and these small pockets are called diverticulosis and diverticulosis can be seen as bubble pockets in the autonomic nerve root. Autonomic nerve root shows dark crypt like lesions around its border and that signifies or says that it is a sign of uh, uh, diverticulum in the intestine. These are the areas where the fecal matter collects and which can be a source of infection. So different structures, even the structures of the colon can be identified from autonomic nerve root. You know what is a structure, it is a narrowing of the large intestine and structure and also the ballooning. See in this picture you can also see how the uh, structure is represented in the iris. See the dipping of the uh, autonomic nerve root in the 9 o'clock position, uh, 10 o'clock position that shows that there is a structure in the ascending column. So you can see the how the structure develops in the intestine in the other picture. This is the actual picture of the structure which is uh, the original picture. This is how the intestinal structures appear. Now ballooning, ballooning of the sigmoid colon is also noticed like a, a ballooning of the autonomic nerve roots. Here you can see it is dilated, autonomic nerve root is dilated which says that there is a ballooning in the intestine. So like those different uh, shape and size of the autonomic nerve root suggests that there is something wrong with the intestine. So there are different varieties of autonomic nerve root distensions, different types of distensions are there which gives a specific idea to how the intestine functions. This is lateral distension and this is ventral distension. distension ventral distension says that there is a tendency for hemorrhoids, viscerotosis and power straight hypertrophy and low back pains and weakness in the lower extremities. And you also have bilateral distension, it shows that there is a tendency toward chronic constipation and flatulence. And this is a funnel type distension which says you have a tendency for hernia and other tissue displacement. Now to conclude this lesson, I would like to say that iridology will help one to analyze the iris for systemic health of the tissues, how your organs and tissues function inside your body, it is a window or it is a monitor screen where you can observe and see what happens inside your body. It, it cannot diagnose the disease but it can definitely say how your internal organs are functioning. Now as a part of complementary and alternative medicine, it is, it is very useful for a practitioner to identify the level of toxicity, toxicity in our body and the organs of the toxic deposits and the possible ways to detox these toxic measures. Okay, as a part, as an integral part of uh, complementary and alternative medicine, it is diagnosis will help one to understand the level of toxicity in the body and the organs of toxic depositions and the possibility detox measures to be adopted 
and for all the wonders that our eye can provide we need to take special care of our eyes and through eyes the health of our internal organs and next classes we will be proceeding with the other structures of the iris uh, which you can analyze and come to diagnosis of different diseases and the health of a of an individual thank you for listening